Good afternoon. I'm Miss Weiss reporting live for the Weather Zone. As you can see, I'm just a few miles outside of Matthews County where an F5 tornado has been spotted. We have reports of wind up to 300 miles per hour. Local residents have been asked to evacuate the area. Here comes a resident now. Let's get her story. Ma'am, what is your name? Miss Lawrence. And what are you doing out here? I'm looking for my dog. My house is just crumbled to the ground, and my gate opened, and my dog got out, and I'm looking for her. What is your overall take of the storm? Ooh, been canceled. Conditions are getting worse out here. We better take shelter. We better get inside. After this commercial break, we'll be back in the studio with Miss Mobire. Reporting on location for the Weather Zone, I'm Miss Weiss. When making your own tornado in a bottle, first you'll need to gather a few materials. To create your own tornado in a bottle, you'll need two two liter plastic bottles, duct tape, access to water, and either a connector made specifically for this experiment called a tornado tube, or two two liter bottle lids and a drill. We have chosen to use the tornado tube connector found at your local hobby shop. To begin, fill one two liter bottle three quarters full with water. Then join the water-filled bottle to an additional empty two-liter bottle using a tornado tube. It's important to note that the tornado tube has a small hole in between the two connecting bottles. Be sure to add some duct tape or electrical tape around the tornado tube joint for reinforcement. Now it's time to turn the bottles over and observe the movement of water from one bottle to the other. At this point, try turning the bottles over again But this time, as you set it down, shake the bottle in a spiral motion. Notice what happens this time. You may be wondering why you saw a tornado form the second time. Well, here's the deal. The first time you turn the bottles over, the surface tension of the water tries to keep the water from flowing down. The weight of the water above it forces the water to bubble up and break through into the second bottle. Each time this happens, pressure builds up in the bottom of the bottle until the air is forced up into the top bottle over and over again until the top bottle is eventually empty. The second time, the water was directed into a spiral formation by your own manpower, making a swirling motion, which created a vortex into the bottom bottle. Gravity works to pull the rotating water down through the small hole where the two bottles are attached and into the bottom bottle. The angular momentum of the spinning water causes the water at the center of the vortex to spin faster than the water on the outer edge of the bottle. This creates a whirlpool effect. The vortex created by the swirling motion allows the air to pass through the center of the vortex without disrupting the flow of the water. When you combine this with the forces of water pressure and the force of gravity, a centripetal force, or spinning force, makes the water swirl. Welcome to the Weather Zone. My name is Miss Mulbier, and I'm coming to you live with a special report on tornadoes. A tornado is a violent rotating column of air extending from a thunderstorm to the ground. The most violent tornadoes are capable of tremendous destruction with wind speeds of up to 300 miles per hour. They can destroy large buildings, uproot trees, and hurl vehicles hundreds of yards. Damage paths can be in excess of one mile wide to 50 miles long. In an average year, 1,000 tornadoes are reported nationwide. Most tornadoes form from thunderstorms. You need warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico and cool, dry air from Canada. When these two air masses meet, they create instability in the atmosphere. A change in wind direction and an increase in wind speed with increasing height creates an invisible horizontal spinning effect in the lower atmosphere. Rising air within the updraft tilts rotating air from horizontal to vertical. An area of rotation two to six miles wide now extends through much of the storm. Most strong and violent tornadoes form within this area of strong rotation. The geography of the central part of the United States, known as the Great Plains, is suited to bring all of the ingredients together to form tornadoes. More than 500 tornadoes typically occur in this area every year and is why it is commonly known as Tornado Alley. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana all make up Tornado Alley. 
Tornadoes can happen at any time of the year and at any time of the day. In the southern states, peak tornado season is from March through May. Peak times for tornadoes in the northern states are during the summer. A few southern states have a second peak time for tornado outbreaks in the fall. Tornadoes are most likely to occur between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. A few safety tips to remember. Practice and prepare. Know where you'll meet your family during the tornado and after. Practice a tornado drill annually. Keep a weather radio in your storm shelter along with safety supplies. Seek shelter. Go to your basement, a small interior room, or under the stairs on the lowest level of your house. If you live in a mobile home, get out and look for a stable building. If outside, find low ground away from trees and cars and lie face down with your arms protecting your head. After the storm, stay away from downed power lines and avoid flooded areas. Power lines could be submerged and still live with electricity. Don't enter seriously damaged buildings and avoid using matches and lighters in case of gas leaks. Know the signs. Look for swirling clouds. Watch for quick wind shifts or start calm after heavy rain. Listen for a loud roar and rumble that doesn't fade. I'm Miss Mulbire, coming to you live from the Weather Center.